Hello everybody, I'm Brenzo, and today should be our last technical video before we actually start building out the Ragnarok. I know, I know, I've been doing nothing but testing, you haven't even seen the ship but like once, and it hasn't really progressed. Little do you know, we're almost there. Once we have all these systems done, we're just building out the superstructure and, well, the rest of the hull, I guess, to make it all fit together, and we're done. We're on to, to the next. The Ragnarok will be done. We'll probably do some fun things with it, and then uh, that'll be that. So before we can get to the final building video, we gotta talk defense. Specifically, we're talking active defense. So I'm defining active defense as anything that isn't armor, because armor is the most passive way to defend yourself. You just make yourself bigger and tankier and healthier. So I'm counting active defense as whether it's missiles, decoys, sea whiz, lambs, everything. That's all going to be active defense. And I'm going to cover all of that in this video. We're going to go through literally everything I can think of in the game except like cram sea whiz because why would you? I guess it's funny. <laughs> I guess it would be super funny but I'm not going to do it. So we're going to go down in some arbitrary order of what I consider like most weapon like to least weapon like and then I'll just show you everything we're gonna do we'll pick some out we'll probably build a few examples and then we'll get on to building right after or after this video so let's get on with it so the first and most basic form of the weaponized active defenses is missile interceptors missile interceptors are super super easy to do you literally just plonk them in any part of your ship and they work. They work so well. The easiest ones are smalls, you just need one block to do them. Mediums you need two. I don't know if people use large interceptors, they definitely don't use huge. But if you use large interceptors and you have a use case for them, tell me because I'm I can't see a use case for them. So smalls are probably your best bet for intercepting like Small, not small missiles, you don't really care about small missiles. Small interceptors are your best bet for intercepting mediums and larges, whereas mediums are your best bet for, or a better bet for larges and huges, as well as for crams, because crams tend to be very, very healthy. So keep that in mind. If you're trying to kill bigger things, use a bigger missile. How do you make a missile interceptor? Well, for smalls, you literally just need the small launcher, and then you connect it. I had this set up in SAM turrets just because I thought it would be cool for testing and make my life easier. But I'm pretty sure you can just put these in your hull anywhere and they'll just automatically go towards any missile that your your system see. You need a SeaWiz controller on this obviously so I'll just add that. And yeah, how do you do it? From what I know, this is the setup. Oh, not fuel tank, it's APN guidance. This is the setup. You need a thruster, preferably be set to max. You could probably also use a, uh, a short range thruster if you really don't care. Thruster, fins, APN, interceptor. And this is it. Because you'll notice that if I take this APN away and I add more damage, this section over here, the damage, doesn't really change. So I don't know if this damage actually gets used, but it's more optimal to just spam more interceptors than to like try and beef them up. You can test it. I don't know if that damage carries over, but I know that this number never changes. The damage to missiles and the damage to crams. So the most optimal is always a four piece missile. Just I just set it to max thrust, no delays on anything. This missile I haven't really messed with obviously, so I have to mess with it. No delays and let it rip and it'll work. I'll show you these in live action after I go through everything. Same with smalls, or mediums rather. You just very thruster, fins, APN, interceptor. Make sure everything is no delay at all because you want these to zip around. And you can see here that, um, what is it? Mediums do a lot, lot more damage. Like to huges, they do 10,000, whereas these only do 1,400 to huges. You only get four of these, you get one of these. So these are your better bet for bigger missiles, obviously. And that's what you want to use. 
you want to use these if you if like your enemies are spamming missiles at you say somebody's using like swarms of mediums but if you're say fighting the megalodon or the stronghold and they're pitching huge and large missiles at you you want mediums and the same applies for torpedoes you just need a torpedo propeller as far as I'm aware since uh, where is it since munition detectors do not work underwater I'm pretty sure if you just have a sonar I'm pretty sure both will work because the uh, the missile sonar is technically active so passive or active will work these will act as defense or uh, munition detectors I'm pretty sure so you don't need to worry about that when applying for torpedoes super simple these are easy they're spammable you just have to keep in mind that missiles are inherently expensive they cost a lot to reload they cost a lot to build so if you spam a lot of interceptors they're gonna cost a lot so keep that in mind but otherwise interceptors are easy and they're very effective they just you have to rely on your missiles actually hitting which can be questionable if your enemy is say spamming a lot of crams or a lot of a lot of maneuverable missiles at you so what's next there's lasers so I'm not a laser expert, I'm not going to claim to be a laser expert, but I've set up a basic LAMS based off what I've been told. I've been told that the optimal LAMS ratio of cavities to storage for general purpose LAMS is three cavities to one storage. So this is 12 to four. And then if you need to shoot through your own smoke, you should add frequency doublers because smoke reduces your AP. So the more AP you have, the better you can shoot through your own smoke. If you're not going to shoot through your own smoke, it doesn't matter. And then, yeah, you just build it out. And if you don't know how to build lasers, the easiest way is just cavity, um, three meter pump, top, bottom, left, right. And then you just add storage and a coupler. So I'm going to, in lambs, use zero Q, just because I don't want to overkill. Because my main thing with lambs is lambs is the only defense type that can shoot down APS. You can't shoot down APS with CWIS at all. So lambs is the only thing you got going there. So zero Q takes your uh, your laser and makes it constant. In reality, it's just 40 shots per second. But since it's constant, it does less damage per shot. So it is less likely to waste damage on overkilling an APS shell. But a 4Q, I don't know what the fire rate is exactly, but it's significantly lower than 0Q. And each shot does more damage. So say you're firing against an APS shell that has 2,500 health and your laser does 2,400 damage per shot. Well, it takes two shots to kill it and then you just wasted a bunch of damage killing that shell. So I think zero Q is best for anti-APS, which is what the purpose my lambs will serve. I also see anti-missiles as, or <laughs> missile interceptors as anti-missile defenses. These are more, uh, what's it called? These are more anti-shells, like crams and APS is what I see uh, lambs as. The main things to know about, AP, uh, about lambs, God, I keep using the wrong word. Is lambs is expensive. Even this little unit here, this double unit, is eighteen thousand. And I'll go to the lambs I've built out over here. This lambs is a hundred thousand, and this is uh, has a power draw of thirty, thirty k, and that is just sufficient for like uh, my my ship size. Lambs is expensive. It takes up a lot of volume, so you need to plan it out. Lambs is also very very EMP susceptible, so we'll see here. Your EMP. Oh, is it not? Am I lying? Okay, the pumps are EMP susceptible. That makes more sense. And I'm pretty sure the couplers. Nope. The purpose. Nope. <laughs> okay, well, you don't want these to get hit because if these get hit, you suddenly can't charge your laser anymore. So they are still EMP susceptible. So LAMS is super fragile, super expensive, and costs a lot of power to run. So you have to be very mindful of all those things when you're building lambs. A giga lambs is going to just annihilate everything, but you quickly will become unable to afford it. So I'm willing to devote like 100,000 mats to lambs, and that's a uh, pretty average lambs. 
So yeah, just if you're making lambs, three to one ratio of cavity to storage for general purpose. Add frequency doubles if you're shooting through smoke. And you can actually configure the lambs module itself. This I think is all up to you. Um, I watched a video by, uh, I think his name is Ohm, who recommended making your lambs super small range so that it just zaps everything immediately and focuses it, it focuses down things that are going to hit you. But do what you must. As I said, I'm not a laser expert. I'm not going to claim to be one. <laughs> I just kind of put them in my ships and hope they work. You also probably won't like output regulators. In fact, I would recommend that if you want to learn more about lasers, since I'm not that great, um, Ohm. So I, I think his name is like Ohm is Futile. If you just look up From the Depths Ohm, he has a great video on lasers, which I would highly recommend. I watched it before I made this video. I learned quite a few things about how to make laser weapons, and it's very helpful. I'd recommend that if you want more information. I'm more of a APS guy. I don't really know lasers all too well. The other thing you can do with lasers is laser sea whiz. This is literally just you take your laser configuration and you ping it to a turret with a sea whiz controller on it. And this acts as if oh, it's not connected, but you get the idea. And so this acts as if it was like a sea whiz turret, like you know this is, but with a laser. The good things about these is you can make these do insane amounts of damage immediately. These are great for burst purpose. I think most lambs are better off as sustained damage, so that's why the 3 to 1 ratio is good because it allows you to keep your energy up. But Laser Sea Whiz is super good if you're trying to just pump out immediate damage because you can build it up with these these storage uh, cavities. No, not storage cavities, what are these called? Storage pieces, whatever. You can build it up and then put it to one single laser that just zaps everything. Of course, you can do the same with lambs. But I like to just devote it to different purposes. And you can also make your laser sea whiz offensive if you want to as well. So you could use it for that purpose. But it's, again, it's basically the same. I, I think laser sea whiz is just more fun for burst lasers because they, <laughs> I guess they look cooler. But it's basically the same stuff. The main advantage here is you can use this offensively. And I just set this up to be a burst laser. You can set lambs up to be a burst laser. So yeah, that's my short and sweet of lasers. We'll be using lambs. Um, laser Sea Whiz is expensive if you're trying to separate it from your lambs. Like to make something that can actually take down a 250 health or 250k health cram shell, you need like a 70k cost material cost uh, laser Sea Whiz, which is a lot of space for just a Sea Whiz that doesn't even act as a weapon. Whereas your lamb, and this can only shoot down missiles and uh, crams as per the rules of the sea whiz controller so APS is better for general purpose laser sea whiz is better for doubling as offensive and defensive so let's talk <laughs> APS sea whiz all right APS sea whiz so first you'll obviously notice that uh this isn't my own creation this is just the the sea whiz off the tier I, uh, I'm not the best at belt feeder autoloader Tetris yet. I'm learning it. I'm getting better at it. But until I can make something that I feel is uh, worthy of showing off, which, you know, may or may not do in this video, <clears throat> I'm just going to use the tier as an example because it's good. It's solid. It's a solid gun that does everything it needs to. So what advantages does APS see was have over, like, lambs or interceptors? Well... APS Sea Whiz is very, very versatile. You can do almost anything with it. You can intercept missiles, you can intercept torpedoes, which lasers can't do. Missiles can do, but if they intercept torpedoes, they also can't intercept missiles. If you use Super Cav, you can have this intercept both if you want to. <clears throat> if you allow it to aim under the water, that is. You can do group damage with like chemical rounds of any type. So you can hit like things in an area instead of hitting one thing with solids. You can do a crap ton more damage than I think uh, missiles can at longer ranges. Because I could be wrong, but I think that uh, APS-C was just has a longer engage range than like missiles do. And it's also pretty volume efficient. It's kind of like a middle ground between 
like the pure volume efficiency of missiles and the like pure uh <laughs> i don't know just big space of uh lasers you kind of get the best of both it's also pretty accurate this gun doesn't say it's very accurate but it, it has uh stabilizers and what is it called tracers so it is actually super accurate and yeah APS-C was kind of does it all it's kind of Jack of all trade, master of none. Like AP, like lasers are super accurate and can deal a lot of damage very, very fast, or sustain damage and hit a lot of targets. APSC Wiz is really hitting only one target. Missiles are good for just like uh, swarm targets, like swarms of crams or swarms of missiles. APS again only hits one per uh, per turret. That is. So it's good. It's not the best um, at any roll. Like a dedicated lambs, like burst laser is better at taking down huge missiles and huge crams, or like small, uh, more pump, uh, less storage lambs is better at dealing with a lot of things. Missiles is better for like just sticking them everywhere, volume efficiency. But APS is kind of just a catch-all, and it's objectively cool. Like, it's, it's the one that works in real life, because I don't think this exists <laughs> at all. And missile interceptors are a thing, but they're typically more expensive in real life like they are in the game. I think this also does have the uh, ammo cost advantage per, like, damage. <coughs> Excuse me. It can do over missiles. So, yeah. APSC was, I see it as jack of all trades. I am going to use it. I'm probably only going to employ like two or three turrets of APS-C Wiz. Probably will be very similar to this. This is honestly a good turret. It's like almost 50k. It has like 45 firepower. You can make it uh, also double as AA very easily. You can make this more accurate, etc, etc. You can change the rounds out. It's a good turret. I, I like it. The, the tiers turret. But yeah. So you can kind of expect all of these weaponized defenses to just make an appearance some way somehow except the laser sea was all of those except that to make an appearance on the Ragnarok so when we're talking about active defenses that aren't weapons the first thing that comes to mind for me is shields shields can be ridiculous or completely useless both at the same time that's because there's two types of shields and they are mutually exclusive. You can't have both shields on the same type of ship. As you can see here, this planar shield is turned off because I have the ring shield on. But let's explain planar first because those are my favorite. Planar is what you think about when you think about a shield. It just makes a little hard light thing that bounces stuff off of it. Planar is easy to set up. You should just kind of have it as close range as you can but still having the shield outside of the thing you're trying to protect. As big as you can, effect strength 10. And you'll notice that shields cost power. So you have to be mindful of how many shields you're using if you're running low on power. And shields are effective against both types of shells, crams and APS, and effective against lasers. So shields are kind of a, a tri or planar shields are kind of a triple threat. They're very useful, and they're probably the best sort of shield in the game. And they do max out, however, at a 20 to 40 percent chance of reflecting um, projectiles. That is, and this is based off how the the projectile hits. Like if it hits the shield dead on, or if it hits the shield at an angle, you get better chances. So that's why you should always angle your shields. But 40% chance, so that's not all that great. But considering how cheap it is to run shields, um, like a 25 by 25 shield is like only 500 power. And that can cover a lot of a ship very easily. So planar shields are good. You should use them. They're great anti-laser. They're great anti-shell. They're great just in general. They're a very luck-based thing, but when they do work, they work very well. Can recommend Rob has used them because that's all that existed back then so I'll be using them ring shields ring shields are new and ring shields are bad 
Ring shields have the same issues as packs, where if they get hit, they do a nice big explosion after. And they take out everything around them. So I can actually show this off, I think, by just this really small explosion. And as you can see here, oops, stop doing that, Rambot. Before the shield fell off, because, you know, it's not connected, so it just fell off. Oop, give me a metal beam. So before the shield fell off, you can see it shot this laser out. So if this shield was stronger and there was something right here, it would do damage to it. So ring shields are volatile. When they blow up, they blow up real nice. And they do damage to like everything around them. So these are just super vulnerable. They don't really even do all that much. They, um, the only thing they do really is they add armor class to your vehicle. So I'm pretty sure they add it in the direction that your ring is facing. So like the open face is facing forwards and backwards. I could be wrong, but this is how I've gathered. So this is only armoring forwards and backwards. This is a very small one, so it's only adding like 6 AP. But you can see here that this piece of metal is 55.5 AP. Or AC, rather. So if you're trying to make something strong and like get your heavy armor up to like 80 AC or something crazy like that, then you can use ring shields. They're not terrible for that purpose, they're just not great. Because the second you get hit in the ring shield, it's gone. It's gone forever. Whereas planar shields are a little harder to hit because they're one block tall and they're not volatile. So when they explode, they don't take anything out with them. So I think ring shields are just a little inferior in that you shouldn't really use them. Because I think percentage chance to, to do no damage is better than just trying to tank the damage better. Somebody probably has the math on that. I don't. So I'll be choosing planars. And then there's the rest of the active defenses. Smoke is non-negotiable. If you want a ship of any size that is able to take lasers and not instantly die, you need smoke. You need to cover your ship in smoke. You need to be careful with it. Because your own smoke can block your own lasers and your own lambs. So keep that in mind. If you're going to use smoke and you're going to use lasers, you either need to set your smoke up such that it doesn't interfere with your lasers because you can pretty sure you can see the uh, the radius here or the circle it affects and you can kind of keep your lambs out of the circle I don't know if you can actually change the radius size I'm sure somebody might know this but yeah smoke is dangerous if you're using lasers but if you're not using lasers and you're only concerned about other people's lasers, just spam it everywhere. Put it everywhere you can. Because the enemy, if they get lasers into you and they have like a big 1Q laser that dumps damage at you and you're not using smoke or shields, you're going to die. So I'll probably I'll be using smoke and I'll be uh, talking more about how to like set up smoke for specific scenarios to def or to defend against lasers. Once I start building up the ship and finalizing it, because that's just going to be like breadboard work, is getting smoke dispensers to work in different scenarios. But yeah, smoke is kind of non-negotiable at the size point, and I'm just going to use a lot of smoke. Smoke and shields is going to be basically everywhere in the Ragnarok. And then here's the others. The less useful well i guess not the flares but these guys the less useful active defenses signal jammer ecms literally only counter remote guided missiles they are very niche and i cannot recommend them they take a lot of power they can take up to twenty thousand power and i just can't recommend them i don't think enough enemies in the campaign use remote or lua missiles for it to matter maybe if you're like fighting in tournaments and someone spamming like javelins or something, like missiles that fire uh, vertically and come down on you vertically, maybe it's useful, but I can't see a use case for sensors or sensor scramblers. And here, oh my goodness, here is radar chaff. Radar chaff literally just adds a bigger error to radar. So if a radar sees you and you spam radar chaff around your ship, 
it will just increase the error and make it harder for the ship to track you. Also works against missiles. It makes missiles that use radar harder to see you. I don't think many people use this. I think it's easier to just <laughs> accept that you're going to get tracked by radar and get over it and use flares or decoys. Speaking of decoys, here is the radar decoy. This is basically a big hotspot that tells every single, miss every single missile that sees it, look at me and fly to me. If you have enough of these at full power on your ship, they will probably, probably take all the fire from your missiles, assuming they're radar guided. It will, as it says, increase your radar detection range, so if you're trying to be stealthy, don't use these. But if you don't care, you're a big battleship like I am, they're going to see me from miles away anyway. You can put these in like far away places, like if I say this platform is my ship, if I do this, and I put a, a decoy up here, well now the missiles are going to go, instead of for my little garage, which is full of my good parts, it'll go for my little mass with the decoy on it, and that it, I don't care if that gets damaged. So this is actually a really easy thing to do to prevent yourself from getting smacked by big radar missiles. And I probably will use some of these. Not a lot, because they're you're still drawing fire to your ship, which is something you never really want to do. But they, they do... If you have things that are like completely useless and can die, like a mast on your superstructure, then you might as well just put them there. Just because what else are you doing with that stuff? This is just like free defense. Except it costs 1k power. The rest of the decoys work the exact same way. IR decoys take IR attention. Sonar decoys take sonar attention. You get the gist. Flares are the exact same thing, but they're missiles. And you can shoot them away from your ship. You can drag them with a harpoon behind you. You can do anything. There's the same three types. Radar, sonar, and flare. Or IR, sonar, radar, and IR. These are best done, in my opinion, with uh, sonar and radar by just spitting them in the air or in the water and then dragging them with a harpoon behind you. For radar, you should have a... What is it? The... The ballast tank set to positive so it sits on top of the water for sonar you should have it set a little negative so it sits under the water and yeah it's just a flare flares are really good it helps draw missiles away even more signal processors will of course try and counter these but it's so it's like shields signal processors and flares are percentage chances missiles have a percentage chance of looking at flares or looking at your ship that's how it works so you're kind of just hoping to take some fire away from you with flares and decoys, but you're not hoping to kill ev or take every missile away. That's what your lambs and sea whiz is for. So that was my not so quick, quick rundown on every single defense type I can think of in the game. What am I going to be using? Well, as I said, interceptors, lambs, sea whiz, APS specifically, Planar shields, and flares, and maybe decoys. Oh, and smoke, obviously. Smoke is kind of a given on every ship. But yeah. So, in the name of testing, I'm going to show off what I think. Like, the amount of uh, APS Sea Whiz, the amount of missiles, and the amount of lambs I'm going to put in the Ragnarok. So here we have, oh, lag spike. We have uh, 100,000 lamb Sea Whiz. This I will probably split into two banks that will all connect into one system. That way it's just a little more redundant. <clears throat> I'll probably have SAM turrets like this as well as just like in place missiles everywhere. But this total is like... Um, where is it? Where are you? This is like 60,000 and then I'll devote like 40,000 to probably torpedo interceptors as well. Just so I can't get gimmick by like the Megadon, Megalodon torpedoes or things like that. And when I build turrets, I'm going for this, this 50,000 kind of goal. That way I just have like 150 and my total like cost of defense is like 350k uh, mats, which I think my current version of the shell is at 1.2, so that would bring us to 1.55. 
and then the rest will just go into like miscellaneous systems, AI, um, secondaries, torpedoes, etc., etc., and superstructure. So I think we should hit the 2 million mark, like, on the nose if I do this right. But anyway, let's show this stuff off. In my opinion, one of the best ships to test against is the Stronghold, because it shoots cram spam and huge missiles at you. So if you can take that down, you're kind of good. Make sure we're on god mode, and here we go. Please work. Nothing. Oh god, it's very loud. So yeah, I have a tar targeting on just so we can make sure that it is actually working. And you can see it's targeting this huge missile out here, which is now dead. So I'm pretty sure that was the Stronghold's main salvo, which just got deleted completely. I probably have too many interceptors. I probably won't have <laughs> probably won't have too many. But this is like a lot of interceptors. Probably too many, honestly. And this Lambs is a very, very beefy. Very beefy. I'll probably have to tune it a little differently. Because it's kind of built for burst right now. So, and it's uh, only focusing shells. It isn't looking at missiles. That way I'm not just wasting power on missiles. I'm really only targeting missiles with the interceptors and the Seawiz. Since this can kill shells, but these cannot. Or like APS shells, rather. So yeah, once that missile is dead, I think we... Uh, yeah, I think we got the stronghold on lock. Let's see if we can stop the Megalodon. Oh, refill ammo. And yeah, this is uh, basically how you do lamps. You just make banks like this, and you just cram them in wherever you can. You should put wrap them in rubber if you care about EMP, because the pumps can get knocked off. And yeah, you just put them in. If you need to connect like different banks, you just use the... Uh, What's it called? The transceiver. You can connect banks across the way like this. Uh, let me connect. Like that. So like I'm not gonna show you how to build it step by step because like it's in the prefabs also have it and it's very very simple. Okay let's test the meg. See if we can survive that. I'll turn God mode off so that I can see if I'm actually taking damage. Oh, pff, never mind. <laughs> okay. So, uh, naturally, since my APS is not meant to deal with rail guns, we're not going to catch all of them. And I don't have shields on this, so like you can imagine that a lot of shells are going to be bouncing off or like being wasted on the armor. But the missiles don't matter. And I'm going to have to tune the, uh, what's it called? The lamb so that I can deal with APS like that. Or just make it beefier. I might devote 150 mats and then take away, like, a Sea Wiz turret or something. Just so that I can be a little beefier. But as you can see, missiles don't do anything. APS we'll, ha we'll learn to deal with once we add shields and all that. Okay. Don't need you. And finally, the last thing I care about is Doom Cram, so we have to run away the hell over here. If this setup can kill, like, Doom Crams on a battleship reliably, I am satisfied. And there's one ship that I have in mind. Where is he? Not mine. The Titan Slung. This thing has, honestly, beefy crams for what it is. It is... Oh, spawned on the wrong team. Oh, and it's so laggy. Jeez. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Titan Song has, like, massive cram spam. It's kind of nuts. It's hard to defend against, and if you can stop its crams, then you can kind of basically ignore the rest of its weapon system. Like, its APS is strong, but it's not that strong. Its lasers are strong, but they can be smoked, etc. So, let's see if we survive that salvo. Okay, well, we didn't kill him. <laughs> Not quite. You don't really have a whole bunch of laser charge, but we'll hopefully get that back. We didn't really hit many missiles, so that was probably not helpful. Let's hope we hit a few. Uh, 
Oh, we didn't hit any missiles. See, that's the thing is getting these to fire against missiles is hard. Not missiles against crams is like weird. So I may lay off the missile interceptors in order to help counter cram better, but we'll see. This is just my general idea. Boom, boom, killed one of them. Okay. Yep. Not effective. It's going to need more tuning before it goes in the Ragnarok. <clears throat> but, as always, we're going to be start tuning really hard once we get in the combat tests and final building. And yeah, that'll be the next episode. So actually, I'll just back up here so we don't hear that anymore. So let's talk what's next. I know what I'm doing for defenses. We're doing all three weapon types and we'll be doing flares and some decoys here and there. As well as shields. We're going to spam shields. I'll probably do uh, somewhat reactive shields like I showed off in that one video. Just to save a little bit of power for more laser use. Oh, we actually killed all three crams there. Nice. So that's probably what I'm going to do. And uh, next video, I'm actually going to, well, I'm going to build out the Ragnarok. I'm going to add everything to it. We're going to, oh my goodness, we're going to add engines, we're going to add all these defenses, probably start thinking about secondaries. I'm not going to do a whole video on secondaries, I'm just going to make them on my own time and I'm just going to add them to the ship. And, uh, and we're going to add AI, and I'm probably going to do like a separate thing on tuning AI. But yeah, the next video is we're getting it done. We'll probably add probably add every single critical system into the ship to the point where it'll be functional. It'll be like 90% <laughs> there. It just won't have the superstructure. So yeah, hopefully you're excited for that. I'm excited. This has been a massive project. I'm ready to finish it. Hopefully you learned something about this basic little defense video I did, even though you can see my defenses aren't doing too well, but... Some of those are the tier, not me, but whatever. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, like and subscribe. Usual stuff. Leave a comment, maybe. Tell me what you think. And I'll see you all in the next one, where we're going to finish out most of the Ragnarok.